Hello everyone, uh, this video will be on reordering with the uh, constant lead time model. Uh, so when we re reorder, our, our inventory acts like this. So over time, we consume inventory each day, and then truck shows up, and we replenish, and then we consume it, replenish, so on and so forth. Pretty simple to understand. Uh, so our, our inventory's behavior can be graphed like this. So we take a look at usage per day times days of lead time gives us our 50% reorder point, sometimes called simple reorder point or simply reorder point. So we'll go ahead and graph this. So let's say that we have six widgets per day and seven days of lead time to get new widgets in. So the slope of our graph is going to be negative six. And then we can graph our lead time in days, seven days, so our reorder point is going to be 42 widgets. So when our inventory falls to the level of 42 widgets, we reorder. Now again, from our previous video, economic order quantity tells us how many to order, but our reorder point tells us when to reorder. So once we reach 42 widgets, we're going to order the quantity which is most economic, our EOQ, um, which is likely more than 42. Um, and uh, then uh, that, that will replenish and then the inventory will drop to 42 again, so on and so forth. Now the problem with this is that we have a um, variable demand throughout our, our uh, uh, life cycle here. So some weeks or some days we will have a very flat or a low consumption rate and other times we'll have an extremely steep consumption rate. So what happens is we, if we have minimum or maximum daily demand and we order reorder point, either we will have inventory left over or we will fall short. In our example here, uh, if we had one unit per day and we consumed, consumed one unit per day over that seven days, uh, we would have 30 few, 32 units remaining. Excuse me, that's not right. Uh, let me try that again. So, uh, we would have 35 units remaining. So we would consume seven per day and we'd have 35 remaining. In this example, if we ordered it at 42 and we consumed it 10 per day, on, on the fifth day, we would have enough inventory for four days. Then on the fifth day, we would run out and we'd have two days where we didn't have any inventory on hand. So that may or may not be acceptable for your business. For our purposes in this course, we are gonna say that we want at least 50% service level. So at least 50% of the time we want to have that inventory on hand. So if we have our reorder point up here, we have our lead time, we need to fill in this stock out. So this is our, our risk of stock out here and, and we have to decide what an acceptable level. So we'll talk about stock out is the opposite of service level. So if we have a 50% stock out, we have a 50% service level. 25% stock out, 75% service level. All right, so we're going to need to determine what additional quantity we want to order. And that is called our safety stock. This is our formula for safety stock. Uh, so we, uh, uh, we're we going to talk about the Z table here, uh, if you remember that. So let me pull that one up. So if you remember Z scores, uh, so if you remember that we have 34% on each side of the mean, right, 47 on each side within two standard deviations. We're gonna talk about up to Z though. So a Z of one gives us 84.13% uh, service level. So we would have about 16% stock out. If we go all the way up to two, we have about a 97. Three, we're getting into that high 99s and 100% is way out there, uh, we'll never get there. Uh, so if you, if you remember, your z-score uh, is just simply the number of standard deviations above the mean that you're going to um, going to order. So uh, we'll go ahead and talk through this one. So we have the z-score times the standard deviation of demand during the lead time. All right. So if you remember your z-tables, we'll zoom in and we'll go through one of these. So we'll find 90%. So these are all percentages expressed as decimals. 
We're going to work our way down. We're going to use 90.15. This is actually a little closer. We're going to round up for our purposes today. So we've got 90% equals 0.9. And we see we can follow that up and we can follow that over. We add the two together, 1.2 plus 0.09, 1.29. So this is our Z-score. So a Z-score of 1.29 will give us a 90% service level. So we'll go ahead and fill in all this information here. All right, now let's work our way through the problem. So we take our Z of 1.29 times our standard deviation of demand times our standard deviation of lead time. Or excuse me, our, our, the square root of lead time. So we have 1.29 times 6 times the square root of 4, which gives us 15. Our 50% reorder point is that 4 days times 10 units, right? So we have our 4 days times 10 units is 40 units. Safety stock of 15 and our simple reorder point, our 50% reorder point of 40, gives us 55, 15 plus 40, 55 as a reorder point will give us a 90% service level. Okay? So 40%, or excuse me, 40 units, that's going to give us 50%. To get that additional 10%, that not, or excuse me, that additional 40% to get us up to a 90% service level, we need to order an additional 15. So if we graph this, this looks like this. So our reorder point gets us up to 50%. Our safety stock gets us over 50%. All right, I'm going to show you this in Excel. So I, I've already built a lot of this. You can see that I pulled this information. From over here, we need to calculate our z-score. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Uh, so the function you're going to want to use for this is norm.env. So norm.env, you put the probability expressed as a decimal, your mean, and I'll show you this if you run aware of this. Um, if you hit the fx, that pulls up this. So our mean for this one is going to be 0 and our standard deviation is going to be one. So by using the norm.env for that probability, this is going to calculate our z-score for us. There you go, z-score of 1.28. Now we said on the table it was 1.29. This is much more precise. All right, safety stock. So our safety stock is equals z times standard deviation of demand, right? Standard deviation of demand times the square root, so we're going to have to type in square root, SQRT, of lead time. And there you go, 15.37. Now again in the slides, uh, that one was 15, that there was some rounding there, okay? So then our 50% reorder point is nothing more than our lead time times our demand and then to get to that 90%, we're going to add the two together. So based on this information, if we order at 40, when our inventory drops to 40, we get a 50% service level. To get to that 90%, we order at 15. Now that does not mean if we order at 15, we get 40%, right? This 15 is an additional 15 on top of that. So if we go back to our slides for a second, to get to this, we have to order the additional 15. That 15 would not get to this point. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, we'll continue on at the next one.